What's up guys, I'm Caddy here and it's Demi Guys, week 9 of the GPC League where I am up against Frido, coach of the Welshion. So if you guys are excited, don't forget to leave a like down below, I would really appreciate it. Now I apologise, this is slightly late, unfortunately due to scheduling issues. Uh, we didn't manage to get the battle done until a couple of days ago and it was meant to be last week. But don't worry, that doesn't mean that we get forfeit penalties or anything like that. We thought it was better to play it late than not to play it at all, so... Um, that's kind of, uh, you know, good news on that front, because I always hate having to do forfeits and all of that stuff. In terms of um, things I need to tell you, so we're currently 5-3, and three, so I really, really need the next three games to be wins to guarantee that I get into playoffs. I think I can get two out of the three, but then it's going to come down to differential, so I really need to make sure that I'm consistent. At least win two out of the three, and I don't really want to lose this one to then have to win the next two games from there. So that's kind of the plan. Is just get wins, <laughs> as always. So, what we have got um, on his squad is Victini, Sylveon, Mainshell, Mega Sharpedo, Tyrantrum, Jolteon, Registeel, Gligar, Sandslash, and Swellow. So, a very, very spooky team. And um, the other thing is, as well, this is the last time that Landorus will be on our squad uh, because I've done some transactions. While I know Landorus is really, really good and all of that stuff, it's just not my Pokemon. I just don't, I don't like how it operates. And I don't like the fact that Earth Power either does loads, or you have to then make that prediction that they, you know, if they, if you predict wrong, they just go into something that levitates and then you can't really deal with it. The other thing is as well, is my team just can't deal with bulky psychic types. And the fact that Landorus and Megalopony both struggle with bulky psychic types, and normally they're really, really powerful, but it, you, most, po most teams have one bulky psychic, and every week so far, I've just had so much trouble with that bulky psychic. So I've decided to take a risk, looked at the matchup for the next few games and also playoffs. And I've ended up trading out Landorus and also Dragalge, which while Dragalge was doing a lot in terms of like damage when I did bring it, it still wasn't performing quite as well as I wanted. And I ended up getting um, Gothitelle and Zoroark. So Zoroark allows me to take on, you know, pairs well with Megalopony um, and allows me to take, you know, take on its counters and checks pretty well. Um, obviously a bit of fighting witness there, and Gothitelle is pretty nice because that allows us to basically trap and uh, take out any walls and stuff like that designed to take on Megalopony. We're, we're basically just a great little revenge killer that can come out, you know, we can choice scarf it and pack it with enough coverage moves to be able to take on most of their team, and just each time they get a kill, just go and pick them off, pick them off and go in from there. So that's going to be really, really nice, and it pairs beautifully with Megalopony because you can basically work out what they're going to bring to answer Megalopony. Get it, trap it, you know, if they're a Scarf fighting type that lock themselves into a fighting move, you just go into Goth, you know, lock, you know, go for Psy Shock, and they're gone, you know. Or if they're a defensive thing, you can Scarf trick them and just take them on that way. So that's going to be very, very nice. But for this take game, because the transactions are later on, we end up uh, having to use Landorus and Dragalge if we want to from there. So in terms of big threats, Victini is like the hugest of huge threats. My team has got a good offense, but it's not got the best, like solid bulk just because I don't like passive walls and I'm probably bad at drafting um so we've got to kind of go on the offensive to try and beat that guy but yeah Victini is definitely a big problem we've got Rotom though which can take those um V creates and stuff like that I'm not I'm expecting him to be choiced in some way potentially just to be able to take on Megalopony a little bit better and also the fact it just puts a lot of pressure on my team if it's choice scarf Sylveon's another problem as well because that's quite kind of a bulky mon I've got Fortress to be able to take on but I am kind of expecting him power fire there to uh, put the pressure on main showers <laughs> there's just everything down most things down here seem to be a big threat so main showers are another big threat because that's a scarf fighting type my team struggles a lot with fighting types I find Especially when it's got U-turn and stuff like that, so it can put pressure on, you know, Latios, it can put pressure on Megalopony. But if it is Scarf, then I can basically try and abuse it with Landorus from there. Um, Tyrantrum isn't as big of an issue, like it does hit like crazy, but um, I've managed to sort the team out so I do outspeed it, so it's not it's not as bad as it could be. Um, the rest of the team is not massively threatening, like Gligar and Registeel are fat, and I'm expecting probably Gl Gligar to come to help check uh, the Megalop. But apart from that, I think we should be fine. Um, but this guy is what we're bringing to try and answer a lot of his teams. So this set with Earth Power, Rock Slide, and Hidden Power, Ice, hits a lot of his team very, very hard. So the Earth Power allows us to hit the Victini, um, the, um, Sylveon fairly well, Main Shao, Mega Sharpedo, Tyrantrum, Jolteon, Registeel, Him Power, Ice for Gligar, and Sandslash, and then he's got Swallow, oh, I missed out as well, he's got Noctowl. So Swallow and Noctowl get no uh, bopped by a Rock Slide, so that's pretty good for us. Um, and basically we can put the pressure on from there. Um, if I can get the rock polish up late game, then that's going to be very, very nice. So that's kind of the plan, is just try and use the five of my mons to put the pressure on, find that opportunity where Landers can come in, get the rock polish up, and then potentially sweep from there. Next we got AV, Electrify. I'm just, 
Electivire on paper always is really, really good. And I don't know why I keep drafting it, but it... <sighs> I kind of need it this match because it's got a nice little speed tier where it outspeed, you know, um, it outspeeds things like Sylveon and Tyrantrum, Registeel, Gligar, Sandslash, uh, and just puts the pressure on from there, and also the Noctowl. So it's it's got that nice little speed tier, and I can invest a lot in Bulk and still outspeed a large portion of this team. Assault Vest allows me to take on the Sylveon a bit better, and I've got Iron Tail to be able to um, blow that back if I need to, and um, just basically the rest of my, my moves are just coverage to try and hit his team as hard as possible. Next we've got the Latios, so this Latios is designed to help the Lando sweep, and also just ease the pressure, because he, uh, he's he got a lot of offense with like the Mega Sharpedo, and stuff like that, so the Latios basically allows me to set up screens potentially, I can Memento to help my Landris be able to set up, and I wasn't sure on the last move, but I decided that, um, uh, what's I'm gonna call it, that Dragon Pulse is probably the best stab to go for, I can't hit, hit Sylveon for anything, but I can hit everything else neutrally apart from the Registeel, which I think is probably worth it from there. Then we've got standard Megalopony, um, which doesn't have Fake Out, actually, I didn't really bother with Fake Out just because I outspeed his entire team. Um, most of the time I wouldn't want to click Fake Out because he's going to be going into Gligar and stuff, and I have Quick Attack instead, because I know if the Mega Sharpie is coming, it's going to have Protect. There's no point in me coming in to Fake Out and try and take it out that way because it's just going to Protect. So Quick Attack just allows me to uh, do a little bit of extra chip damage to that and pick it off if it's weakened. Fortress is also coming. Uh, that gives me a semi-switch into the Sylveon, as we said. It might have him power fire. Um, gives me a sort of check to Mega Sharpedo, Tyrantrum. Not the bait, you know, not, not amazing because we are Spadef. Uh, the T-Spikes and uh, Stealth Rock he is nice because he's, I think Gligar's, is, yeah, Gligar's is only has a removal outside of like Defog Swallow or maybe Noctowl, I guess. But I'm not expecting either of those two to come, so that's kind of why... Uh, Fori is going to be pretty useful, and T-Spikes just help me a lot, because it helps whittle down Mega Sharpedo, um, and also the Sylveon and things like that, especially when he's going to have Protect a lot, I think, with, um, Lopunny with Fake Out, and also if it's Wish Protect, protect Sylveon. And then finally, we have to bring Rotom, because Rotom gives me a check, as I said, to uh, Physical Victini, and it also gives me a check to, um, the Mega Sharpedo as well, which is going to be, uh, pretty nice for us, and just in general, like, it switches onto its, some of its weak, his weaker mons, like the Registeel, Gligar, Sandslash, Swallow knocked out, it kind of deals with a little, you know, pretty well. So it's got a fairly good matchup against quite a large proportion of his team. So what we're going to do now, as always, is go on to the battle, and you can see exactly what happened from there. Okay, so we are at the battle, and as you can see, he has decided to bring the Victini, the Sylveon, uh, Main Shao, Sharpedo, and then a defensive core of Gligar and Registeel. So very, very scary on the offensive side. As I said, like, the Victini, Sylveon, are, and also the uh, Mega Sharpedo are very, very prominent threats. And if that's Scarf Main Shao... You know, it's going to be putting the pressure on. I, I probably, um, it was, it's difficult with my team, as I said. My team just isn't defensive enough to be able to take on lots and lots of offense sometimes. So, uh, that's kind of why I've had to go down the route of, of trying to out-offensive him. So, my plan, as I, as I said, was, is to, I need to weaken the Sylveon. I need to weaken, um, pretty much just the, that and main shout. And then, I think... Uh, Landorus will be able to handle it from there. The only other thing to notice as well is because we did our battle after the transactions, we basically, ch I, I, and I made my tra transactions, I changed the dock on there, and what I didn't realise actually was Frido then checked the dock after we did the transactions to build his team. I assumed he'd built his team from there. So actually, he hadn't got any prep for Lando I. So I'm, I, you know, it was a really terrible mix-up, and um, there's not much that we could really do about it, because now he's seen my team, I've seen his team, it wasn't like he could go away, re-prep, and come back, because he knows what I'm bringing from there. So, um, it was really unfortunate, and I think it was just a bit of, you know, miscommunication on both sides, and, um, yeah, he, he was sort of, uh, you know, understanding about it, but it's just... It's just not fun, really, <laughs> I must admit. And I, I, at least it's not as bad as what I've done with, in my DSL battle, I think, week three, where I prepped for the wrong team. But uh, it's still pretty painful, especially with how much pressure Lando I puts on. So in terms of the lead I decided to go for, I decided to go for the Latios, because I can just set up screens on a lot of things. I had basically a good matchup versus, you know, the first few set, few Pokemon, uh, obviously not the Sylveon from there. But then he decides to lead off with the Sylveon, and I'm like, oh goodness, my habit of leading off with completely the wrong thing is back again. So out comes Fortress, because I need to be able to try and take this on. And he does a decent amount of damage, looking to be sort of... Um, Possibly like defensive, maybe a little bit of special attack investment. Then he shows he has got the hidden power fire as I just get my rocks up. He's got no way apart from the Gligar to be able to do it. Put, you know, get rid of rocks. And I put a lot of pressure on his Gligar, so uh, that's pretty nice for me. 
He is going to go for the Hyper Boys here, predicting me to switch. And I was like, uh, I'm not going to switch here. I go for Gyro Ball, and then I realized just how little that did. That was not the right play on my part. I should have gone for the Toxic Spikes there. But um, I had the thing is, I wanted Heavy Slam because I knew it would do so much more to this um, uh, Sylveon. But unfortunately, then Tyrantrum would, would take a lot less from it. And if it was Dragon Dance, Tyrantrum, then I was in a lot of trouble from there. So I had to basically try and sum up, you know, Heavy Slam versus... Um, Gyrable, so I decided Gyrable was an idiot. It was a risk I had to take, and um, unfortunately, it didn't pay off from there. So he's then able to take me out from that. So that's that is very unfortunate. But we've got our rocks up, which is the main thing, um, and we can try and work out what to do from here. So I go into Electivire, he goes to protect, and I go for the Iron Tail. Now I know for a fact he's not staying in here. There is no way he's staying in, and he switches out here into Registeel. So I go for the Ice Punch. Now I get some crazy hacks. I don't know what it is. When I'm laddering, I get gypsy cursed and all of that stuff. But when it's in battles, you know, he it's just crazy. So he does get frozen there, which is going to be really nice for me. And just helps, you know, if he's got rocks and stuff like that, helps, you know, stops him from getting rocks up, which is going to help me a lot. So I just go for the Earthquake here, decide to play it safe. And now I can just go for the Ice Punch, put the pressure on this Gligar and see what it wants to do. He just goes for U-turn. So that's absolutely beautiful for us. We get some nice chip damage on it and we can see from here. Now... This is where the Iron Weasel comes in, and I'm pretty sure from the from what he had here, he's probably Scarf. So, we've got some information there. I did end up having to sack off my Electivire. This is the problem, as I said. I don't have the bulkiest team, um, and I struggle a lot with very, very powerful Scarfers. So, now I can go to the Latios and basically decide what I want to do from there. Out comes Regina George. I just set up the light screen. I can just keep setting up the screens here. Basically stop, you know, help prevent any offense that's coming in my way from there. And now I can go into Lopunny. So, I knew he was probably going to switch here. I was definitely not going to go for Fake Out. Uh, no, I didn't have Fake Out, actually. So, I just go for a Drain Punch because I knew anything that wants to come in is still going to take a decent amount from that. And with the Reflect and Light Screen up, I can put a lot of pressure on his team. So, now the Gligar's going to go down, which is really, really nice. So, Rocks are here to stay, which makes Victini so much easier to try and deal with him here. So, out comes Victini. I was like, oh, do I stay in? Do I stay in? And he goes for U-turn. So, I, oh, I should have stayed in and just gone for it and been a man and stayed in. But unfortunately, he does U-turn out there, looking to be potentially Scarfed as well, so it could be double Scarfers, which is not good news for me. I just Volt Switch out here, and now I can go into my Landris, and I can decide whether I want to set up or not. But at this point, I looked at this team, and it's like, I'm still not ready yet. I need to weaken the Sylveon a little bit more, and um, even like the Registeel. Registeel's going to be able to take this hit, so I just was like, everything's grounded. Everything's going to get two KO by this. Let's just fire off an Earth Power, and just do some early, sort of mid-game wall-breaking. Um, he, unfortunately, he's still frozen. I really apologize for that freeze. That was a really, really unfortunate freeze. I don't know what the set was, but, you know, obviously, it, probably being able to get rocks up and stuff like that would make a big difference. So, out comes the, um, Scarf main shell. Pretty, pretty spooky. If it is Scarf, it was either Scarf or Banded. And I decide to take a risk, and I go into Lopunny, because I'm like, I'm sure he's going to U-turn here, or he's going to knock off, and I can take either one of those with Lopunny. So, he goes to U-turn here, and goes into the Sylveon. Now, I spent a while looking at this, and I was like, right... I know that if I fire for a turn here, then Landra should be able to take this out with an Earth Power from there. So I need to try and work out exactly what I want to do here. Do I sack off the Lopunny just to get some damage off on this? Because then I'm in Rock Polish range for sweeping the rest of his team. And it's a bit of a risk, but do I go for it? And I, just, I looked, looked at it, I was like, well, I think that's probably my best bet. Just to get damage off, get damage on this guy and um, basically force him to go for Hyper Voice, and he does go for Hyper Voice and take us out. So now I can go into my Landris, and this was the thing. It, it, Earth Power was a little bit iffy at this point. It depended on his investment, but I looked at how much ta special attack investment was like. Maybe he won't be... I don't think he's going to be specially defensive. He doesn't look to be maybe fi fully physically defensive, so it's difficult to tell exactly um, what to do here. So at this point, I kind of regretted not having Sludge Wave, I must admit, but I knew Earth Power had still had a good chance to kill. So, um, even after the Protect, I think. So, luckily he doesn't go for Protect and goes straight for it. So, I didn't even have to worry about the roll from there. Out comes the, ma uh, the main shell. I decide to sack off my um, Latios because I'm like, if he goes for U-turn, that's not the worst thing in the world. I can basically go into Rotom and pressure, you know, the other, the other two. If he goes for knockoff, that's even better because I calc it. Landris I doesn't need its um, Life Orb anymore to be able to kill everything else. So, he does lock himself into knockoff. So, that's great for us. And basically what that means is we can go into Lando, and he goes for knockoff, does a huge amount of damage. I think, to be honest, that probably will be banded, um, now that I think of it in retrospect. I never properly checked the calcs, which I probably should have done. I think because it was just Okoing stuff, I didn't really know. <laughs> but anyway, now I get the rock polish up, and this is the point where I was like, right, if he's got Aqua Jet, still not the worst thing in the world, Rotom should be able to take it on, because I can Volt Switch on this guy, 
take him out, and then I can also take on the Victini from there, because a uh, Hydro Pump should be able to take him out. So I'm not too worried here. He gets a Protect, and I was like, I'm just going to Earth Power, because he needs to get Triple Protect bit to be able to outspeed me, if I remember rightly, because he's got to Protect first turn, get one speed up, which is going to be... Um, Speeding me out, just um, outspeeding me at neutral. Then he needs to protect again to be able to outspeed me as if I was Scarf. And then he needs to protect again to be able to guarantee that he will outspeed me outside of Rock Polish. So I was like, okay, that's fine. I'm just going to keep clicking Earth Power. The chances of him getting triple protect is um, pretty unlikely. And as I said, even then I've got Rotom in the back pocket, so it's not the worst thing in the world. And Lando Eye manages to clean up from there. So <laughs> ironically enough, I drop Lando Eye and it gets five kills in the last game. So. Yeah, I, I don't know. <laughs> I should try and drop stuff more often just so it, it performs well in the last game. But anyway, I hope you guys did enjoy the battle. Because that, of that, we're now 6 and 3. So we've got a really good chance now of starting to make our way to playoffs. We have to win one out of the next ones um, to make it that come down to differential. And if we win the other two, then we're guaranteed into playoffs from there. So hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, don't forget to leave a like. And I will see you guys at the next one. McCaddy out.